Hello, welcome to a, another episode of Roto where we delve or deep dive into kit bag of a fellow wedding photographer. Um, today we're joined by Nick Church, who Hi. may have recently saw the little video we did uh, where we were just chatting in an interview with Nick about everything weddings and photography. Um, and part of that, and what, what we'd like to do is also have a look inside their kit bag. Um, so, if it's alright with you, can we show everyone what you got? Yes, we can, yeah, absolutely. So we've got my 35mm lens on this yep. body already, so this is an A7R3. Yeah, so that's a Sigma 1.4. Sigma, Sigma 1.4. Native for Sony. Yeah, yeah, and I had the same lens with um, on a Nikon fit, loved it, and equally good. With this yep. performs really similarly. I did have a couple of Zeiss Distagon 1.4s yep. as well, but there, there is a soft, you know, there is a well-known problem with some with, with mm. quality on those, and I think the ones that are being sold on three eBay, which is where I got them, yeah. probably the ones that people are a bit cheesed off with, okay. you know, focus it. So um, that's brilliant, um, love that. So that's on my body pretty much all day okay. on that one. The other one is this beast, um, <laughs> which is so big. This is my Billingham bag. Let me up. So, yeah, I quite like your solar so, bag. Actually, it's more of a, a large messenger style holder. Yeah, yeah, and I've had that. Um, since day one, really. And it, it, what it serves is, I bought, up, I got that on eBay as well. Um, didn't have any inserts. It was okay. sold without those, annoyingly. So I did what I'd now call a Nick Church, which is to phone Billingham, <laughs> and say that I'm disgusted that this bag hasn't been shipped with inserts. <laughs> which, which was true because it was from a second hand, you know, hand shipped it. So they really kindly sent me some over. <laughs> I think I paid for it, but they gave me a discount price on it, so that was good. Fair um, enough. So you can't. Okay. So no. yeah. There's so a little tip for you to. Like buy second hand and go back to the manufacturer and <laughs> right. ask for a discount on yeah. the bits that you Why need. Not? Why not? So we have, of course, the wonderful 70 to 200 G Master. Yeah, so that that, that is um, until it gets dark and just only then because the opportunity, not that it won't, won't perform well in the dark, but the opportunity for um, getting the sorts of shots I like with this just decreased when it gets dark, so I, I, I change at that point. But all day long that's on there through bridal prep. Just always um, on your person. <clears throat> yep. So you'd shoot pretty much the whole wedding with these two then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so move, move back your feet 95%, that, yeah, exactly. And that gives you the flexibility. Um, and I've got both on me at the same time, so I'm not, I'm not changing lenses. This does come out, if I'm doing night shots, sometimes night portraits, with a bit okay. of flash, so that, that's, it's just such a beautiful lens. Um, heavy, really expensive, but you can't fault it. I haven't yeah. actually, I've done a few test shots with these, that is heavy. <laughs> That's very heavy. <laughs> it kind of takes away the benefits of the, the lights only body. Absolutely, yeah. But that is, a, yeah. yeah. I, I know the quality of it, but it doesn't, yeah, it is, it is nice thing. So I, I used to have, um, I used to have to, I've still got the uh, Batis. So if in the evening when I change, it will be yeah. generally to put um, that on. So that's my um, 18 mil Batis. Nice, yeah. Now I'm looking for a good, oh, that's light as well. From, and that's, from that yeah. to that, that's, and but, I'll be completely honest, that was the reason why I changed to a Sony system. I thought, well, okay. one one lens, one body with a 25 on, Bass 25, yeah. one with an 85, I'll be able to save all, all that all that weight. But um, I missed the reach of a two, 200 and a 35 mil focal length. I missed that as well. But these no, but no, these no, remain no. to be just stunning lenses. Um, I know people complain about that. You know, it's not particularly fast lens. Um, but that's why it's so light and small. You can't have you can't have it all, right? I mean, yeah, that's that's a lovely weight actually. I'm I'm quite impressed with that. And I like I love I do love these Zeiss lenses. Just the way that it flows the shape yeah. of it. It just the shape with the lens head. I, yeah. yeah, I'm a fan of them. I must admit, and they are sharp, aren't they? Um, I'm they, interested. How much is something like this lens at the moment? The I, oh, that's too, I think it was around nine fifty. Something okay. like that. Not cheap. Not cheap. But, no, but nothing is, is it, for Sony, no, it seems. Not quality. Um, and this, you can feel the quality just by holding this. But the the, the resale market is extremely good for Bass Lens. Everyone, they're really hot property. Everyone wants them. Um, so, so you're never losing your money no, on it. No, they're, they're good. I mean, the um, that soft focus okay, kind of lovely. focus by yeah. wire is really good. There's that OLED readout. Yeah. Distance scale when you're manual focus. And that's invaluable for like first dance type stuff where you think... I can't see a damn thing. I've got no <laughs> idea that it's in focus, manual focus. And because sometimes in manual focus, you can't even see when it's zoomed in on the EVF. You can't necessarily yeah. see exactly focuses. If that tells you your, your, your range that you're in focus, you can just think, right, two to four meters, 
fine. I'll just make sure I'm in that, and you don't yeah. need to worry about anything else. So that's that's great for that. That's lovely. I might have to borrow that one. Fine. Yeah. You can have it. You know, I'm. I'm I can have it. Out I can have it. It's on video. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one that we um, talked about. Yes, yeah, so just mentioned you purchased this. This is brand new to Nick. So yeah, so this one hasn't even been on a um, on a body yet. So I'm um, looking forward to having a play with that one. That's the 90 mil yeah. 2.8 macro. Um, so another G Master uh, G G range sorry, rather than G GM. Range, sorry, um, I'm always doing that. Then, yeah, but um, <laughs> but I, I for oh, yeah. one can't see much of it. I can't see any quality difference between that and the G Master. Yeah. Certainly the the 1635 G Master I've seen it's re they're really similar build quality. I like I like the when you can just push that down to do the manual focus yeah. and then put the focus up to leave it on auto. So, um, so that's that's my project for the next um, the next couple of months is to um, try a few more macro shots. The great thing with the 35 and the 200 setup that I use is that both of those that that so that the Sigma art will focus pretty close. Yeah. Um, this has got such a beautiful um, narrow depth of field. So yeah. between the two things, you tend not to really need, especially with on a 42 megapixel sensor, you've got such cropping potential. You you can do shots like rings and bouquets and things without needing macro lens, but when you've got time to set up that sort of shot that one. takes out, I think, I think it, it does it does need that, that lens. Yeah, no, it's it's really nice. It's, this is this particular lens is right at the top. I'm looking for a good macro. Um, I use some other options that aren't aren't as good. Yeah. Um, but again, if you want the quality, you've got to pay for it. And it's, well, that's it. Yeah. How much did you pay for that? Because I know it's not it's not <coughs> the end of the world. It's yet. not. It was six six three five, I think. That's really good. Yeah. That's and really that, that good. That was brand new. Um, grey market, probably. Okay. But which yeah. I'm, we're not against grey market. Absolutely I'm not. certainly not. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not not at all. I think you know the to save thirty percent, forty percent sometimes of the, yeah. the the value you're going to get in a high street shop, especially on lenses, because lenses they arrive if they work. Yeah. They're fine, as long as you look after them. You shouldn't ever have an issue with the lens. And I had, what, in any case, I had one one nip that I wasn't happy with um, from the, that company we talked about earlier, so if you want to say you said, um, the one that you got yours from, they, they exchanged it really quickly. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's talking really about Panamols, which I think most people know about Panamols now. And, um, oh, in so the I'm UK, so happy, I yeah. use them for, for certain things, because in the UK you get three year UK based warranty, you don't have to send it out of the country, it's it's great, so but I haven't had an issue with anything. And you know, that's and you and you're saving four hundred quid sometimes, money. you know. A lot so. of money, yeah. And even if it was out warranty, that's gonna you know, that's gonna pay for a lot of yeah. things fixed. Yeah. And t t t lenses tend not to go wrong, do they? Generally. They tend not Generally. to go wrong. Unless you, they're either the wrong lens. when you get them. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes, or you whack them. And if you, you break, whack them, you that, them, that's that's your own fault, isn't it? Um Batis 85 as well. Now this one doesn't see much much use um, because see, it now, because I, it overlaps with the 7200 range. So now I still use the 85 1.8, the Sony, the the base range 1.8, if you will. And I was looking at this in particular a lot because I am I generally shoot prime. That's, mm -hmm. that's the way I go. Um, so I use a 28 or a 35 and an 85 pretty much all day. Yeah. Um, and I bring out a 55. Um, as and when. That might be changing soon. I might be getting the 135 1.8, which right. I tested in a previous video, which you'll see, and I just fell in love with that, and I think. I'm hearing a lot of good things about I'm that. I'm hearing, one, yeah. yeah, I'm here, I'm, I'm missing the reach that this gives, and so that's something that I'm weighing up for this year. Mm -hmm. um, but I went for the 85 1.8 over this, because I was hearing that they're nearly identical. Yeah, um, I, I think that's the case, yeah, I think the, with it's a funny bit more weather seeding. You do not use this much because of your other lens choices, though. That's right. It's not because there's a problem with the lens. Absolutely it's just... not. No, it's beautiful. If I'm doing a portrait shoot where where it's <coughs> excuse me where, where it's um, there's a subject and we're in woods, whatever it is, is a you know might be a modelling thing or something. I will often just use that one rather okay. than that, and it's um, just because you've got it's faster. You, you, you know, it is, it is a lovely lens to use. The reason I keep it is because what I was finding was that having just a big kit, you tend not to use it. You don't, you don't use it for anything other than professional stuff. So if you go out yeah. with the kids, you've got a holiday, you think, oh, I can't be able to take it all. But with that, the 80 mil and a little Sony body, in a very small man bag, you could, you could pretty much shoot a, a wedding if you had to. Yeah. You could shoot anything. So um, I'm loath to get rid of that. But if, if I do, you know, it, when the next lens comes along, I think probably if it was a 35, 
um, GM, G Master, yeah, yeah, that's 35. Yeah. That probably need to sell a couple of these on a kidney, probably. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, the actual G Master, as I keep saying G Master every time I see the G, but I know it's not. Um, but yeah, the G Master range are. Yeah. They're not cheap. No. I don't even want to know how much that one was. That's 2K, I think. <laughs> didn't want to know. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it is. They yeah. are, um, yeah, but they are great. They are great. And then what else we've got in here? Um, so there's my other body. Um, so have you got two? Two, two exactly the same, yeah. A7R? So, yeah. A7R. Um, yeah, okay. Went for those rather than the A7 III just at the time. There wasn't much difference in price. Yeah, I think um, I remember because you went over to saying just before me, I think, and you were telling me about the A7R III, and I was looking at it, and obviously the A7 III came out, and that sold it to me because I was able to get two bodies, and at that time they were, I think, 1850 in the UK yeah. or $2,000, mm. um, and that was. That was discounted then, but now they're even cheaper. The A7 yeah, you see them. It's difficult, and I'm another video I've got coming up. Something I'm going to talk about: what gear I would recommend when you're first starting out, um, and if budget allows, the Sony would be right up there. I wouldn't necessarily say if you've never done much photography to go out straight away and buy that, um, but I think it would be my sort of premium starter setup, definitely. Yeah, I, I agree. I think um, I. I started out with a Olympus. So I'd started off mirrorless yeah. um, before I went to DSLR um, with the Olympus range, um, Micro Four Thirds, yeah. you know, it was great. I really, really loved it. I didn't realize at the time, because I'd not used anything else, was that continuous autofocus just didn't work. It just doesn't work on those. Okay. It does on the um, M1 version of the thing, which is the professional end, yeah. which is really expensive. Um, so if it, that that was the main thing that limited me going into any events or weddings yeah. with it because it just it just couldn't use continuous autofocus because it was just hunted around. Um, plus you, with the with with the sense you know the, the smaller sensor, if you do need to recover lots of shallow details, which you can shoot around that when you're a bit more experienced. But in the early days, yeah. you know you think, oh, I've completely messed that one up. I'm gonna have to lift that in post, yeah. and the, the the dynamic range isn't there, and you just get really noisy images. Um, Fair enough. I can yeah, that makes sense why you moved over and. Obviously, with these full frame, they're lovely. But as I will say, um, the people that care about image noise are probably watching this. That's about <laughs> yeah, it, the right? <laughs> yeah, it's the other photographers, it. it's you guys that care. The, uh, yeah. the clients never really pick up on it. Um, but it's gone so far now, you can just do more with them. Yeah. Um, along with high speed sync. Yep, so um, V860 from I, I use, um, normally have three of these. Um, this is the, the V860 2. Um, for Sony, I've still got an old, uh, not an old one, but a Nikon yeah. version of the same one that I use just remotely. They're all the same, they're just different um, yeah. shooting there. Yeah, they're fantastic, they're, they're really good. Um, I didn't bring all three because I thought that probably would make it a bit more dull to talk about <laughs> everyone into it. No, but yeah, it's fine. It's you might be able to use some effects plugin to, yeah. to, to duplicate I'm these not going to bother, just imagine no. it. He's got three. So um, <laughs> the, these are fantastic. What I love about these, and it, it really was a, took so much stress out of a wedding day from having, at the time, a uh, Nik Nikon yeah. 700, yeah. but SP 700, and all the bloody batteries. Yeah. Those batteries was the, the most frustrating thing. So this has got the- I haven't used these. I haven't used right. the 86, so I, you probably, guys, you know, what my most popular video actually is about the AD200, which I love, but yeah. I never even yeah, considered the, the, the it. I don't know why, I great. just went straight to um, it, but I'd hear I love things. the fact that the, um, Transmitter all the all the radio system as well as the um, transmitter yeah, for them so as well. Exactly so, the same transmitter. but but all the same governance is in there. So if that's on camera, all that's on camera. You can do pretty much the same thing. It's a bit, it just bit works, easier with that. It, it just works so well. Um, so a combination of the the transmitter just working without having to have a separate one, which I used to have like a yes. pocket wizard. Yes. That I don't think has ever worked for anybody ever. No, it never right? works well. So that's really good, and. Um, that that will just last three weddings. Yeah, and you, that's what I love about the two hundred. You, know, you just you do it, and you sometimes forget and go, "When did I last charge it?" And yeah. you look, and you still got fifty percent, exactly. and you know that I do the wedding. Yeah, um, I think I've, I, I've never had it off of one hundred percent. I then not charge. charge I just charge it every every time that is the wedding, but it's never moved off that, and I, I use flash a lot sometimes. Yeah. So, and I yeah, they're great. Got on there the Magmod system yeah. as well. Yeah, so I've got the. Um, I use that a lot. Um, if I can um, just not bounce off anything. Yeah, um, just helps to yeah, quite nicely. It, it can, I, I, what I've started to do um, more recently is, is use grid as well to control things a bit. Okay. Um, 
which can keep a lot more of the atmosphere of the image in. So if you've got a barn lit up, um, well, I might be preaching to convert it here that, that know loads more about this stuff than I do. But if you've got a barn lit up with nice sort of fairy lights and things, you've got yeah. a couple walking in, that's going to light up your couple, but keep everything else you know, really yeah. ambient. And that and that adds that's really improved my flash photography actually, which okay. is other, especially when it's on camera and you're you're potentially far away from the yeah. person from the subject with one of these on. It's just going to have to light everything up. Then you yeah. you can you get perfectly exposed yeah. shots, but without as much character in. I'm quite a fan of, of using a grid now, and um, again, that's something only I've started doing the last year or so. Yeah. Because otherwise, before that, it was just bouncing it off the ceiling just to get an even light, um, yeah. just so your image was well lit. That's but you right. do you lose that atmosphere, and if it is a nice rustic venue, um, you don't want to lose that atmosphere. And that's yeah. That's so the way the way I always got around that was just to get as close as possible to your the, the, the couple. And yeah. then you fall off so quick that you do keep the, the, the stuff in there. But when you're f further away, yeah, that's great. I, I really like yeah, it. Yeah, that sounds um, pretty good. So yeah, so that that's always um, always there in the bag. I've got my whole my whole fast. Um, so yes, you're a whole fast that. convert. So yeah, so I'm always clunky around, either looking like um, a cowboy or someone's a bit more of a fetish. You know, <laughs> fetish side. I'm fine with either of those really. I don't mind whatever. Fair enough. Um, but that has been. I used to shoot, um, I think we talked about this before, but I, I, I've, if ever I wear anything with like a belt based system, it just pulls yeah. my trousers down, which is yeah. the almost the last thing you want. I use the wedding. Spider Pro system, which is belt based, and yeah. I have to have it quite tight. Yeah. Um, luckily, I'm soft, so I can pull it in. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so avoid, avoid bearing my backside, then that is great. And it, it's, good for you. It's, it's better for my back, yeah. especially with such heavy kit. As well, I think. If, if you're a sp definitely consider your uh, the, your options for carrying all your kit when you go professional, um, it's one of the best things you'll do. Yeah, straps, two cameras, especially strap around your neck, it's not very nice. After no. you've only got to do a couple of weddings and you, your neck's hurting, and I think you just look a bit like a journo type. Yeah, yeah it doesn't hat, look professional don't. All I would say is that, as you can, I don't know if we can see on here, um, you do get a bit of collateral damage. I, will, off I there. will say my camera's not my shoulder and it does look a little bit neater. Is that just from swinging on? It's the... just swinging. I think what happens is it's because it's not even it's not even connected there. Obviously that's connected under there, but I think it's this backup strap. I think that just rubs. Okay. And um, I mean it, you do have to be careful, especially if you're fairly wide like I am. If you're going through a doorway, you can sometimes hear a bit of a mm. clunk. You think, oh god, I've just I've just whacked Move sideways, three grand's like worth walks, of kit into. Yeah. Walk sideways. Um, but yeah, you do get that. I know that it's quite popular to change that with. Um, Peak Design do like a okay. quick release yeah, thing that's yeah. softer and you don't jangle, jangle around. It's so difficult, like, but so. it's always worth remembering it, if you're using it for professional work, it's a tool. So don't be too precious with your gear. Be prepared exactly. to put it yeah. for a little bit of effort because yeah. you'll get the better shots. Yeah. And then obviously loads of cards and batteries, which having sure. a, a pocket full of cards has saved me on more than one occasion. Yeah. Most recently when these decided they didn't want to read the one two one two eight gig cards that I'd purchased. That Not it good. arrived that morning, bridal prep put them in. It wouldn't. It, it wouldn't, wouldn't read it. Back to old ones. Um, yeah, but luckily I had the old ones in the bag. Um, and then just some bits, you know, bits and pieces, just to if you're trying something different, you creative. know, creative. Yeah, a little creative bit of light crystal. through there. Fairy oh, lights. You can't beat a bit of fairy light action. Is that a Christmas tree decoration? I think it probably is. Yeah, <laughs> I think it is. I start. Yeah. And this is this is where you find your own style because it's hard and everyone. Prism, same same yeah, thing, you know. People bring out similar things, yeah. but then I imagine that gives you quite a unique, unique look. Yeah, and like like anything, if you use it in every image, um, you probably get sectioned. But if you just do, do it what, occasionally, yes. same with the prism. If you're doing every wedding with the prism, then it's going to look a bit obvious. But you could, that, that just can add something different. And yeah. all of these things is just thinking, especially if it's towards the end of the day, and you think, well, what can I do that's really going to mix it up? Mm. You know. Um, just try and create something different, different colours. What I do want to start doing more of is with the Magmod system, using more creative gels and things gels, like yes, that. Yes, yes, um, I'm doing more of that. Because I'm a bit lazy with that and I do need to to get involved in that. I think that's it, it's, there's a lot to think of. So there's, yeah, there's a lot. And everyone, this, this kit bag's taking you how long to get to this point now? Three years, yeah. you say? So yeah. it's, it's not something that's going to happen overnight. And this is a very small amount of kit that I bought because I'm, I'm always flipping stuff, buying, yeah. buying stuff and getting it. This is what he's using it. today. Yeah, in exactly. six months it might be very it different. It does change often. Um, other than that, in here I've got like a um, emergency pocket of contact lenses, <laughs> ibuprofen, um, 
what else is in there? Any, anything that I think. First right, aid health kit. Just stuff that if I if I lose contact lens or if I get really ill, that's, yeah. that's going to sort me out in there. Worth having a few John and food uh, things in there. Yeah, John mentioned in his last video he carries plasters and he was a hero because he gave a plaster to the bride and. Well, yeah, that's right. And it's yeah. Just little things like that that it's funny really, but just having it on you. I worked with a videographer that um, said he's always got in a little sewing kit. Yeah. Because the number of times that bridesmaids or brides do need a sewing kit or bit yeah. of super glue for you know. And you can be the hero of the day, can't yeah. you? If and there. a lot of you guys that do weddings already know this, that you, you, you're more than the photographer. You're there to help the best man. You're there to look after the rings. You're there to put the flowers on the groomsmen. You're there to... Sample canapes and things. Yes, that's, that's yeah. the most important job, to be honest. Yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot more than just taking photos. As we mentioned in the last video, running a business, but on the wedding day, again, 80% is taking photos. There's 20% you're doing a lot of other things. But you are, and you are ultimately representing your business, whether it's your own business or whether you're mm. associate for another for another business you are there to put the you're the face of that business that yes. day and every interaction <clears throat> needs to be wary of that you need to think about how am i coming across am i you know and, and it means you can't be necessarily the same on every wedding some weddings are different to others sure. so you can be different at one wedding but you have to make sure you're you know fitting in and you're being complementary to what's happening around you not just yeah. you know just blind going through the same way you do every, every, every other time and just things like that you know it, it's surprising the, the the better shots that you'll get late in the day with bridesmaids for example yeah. if early in the day you've you've had a you know you've been able to help them fix their shoe or something or have yeah. a bit of a laugh with them and it does really pay, pay dividends later on yeah that's a well that's a good point to finish on I think your kit bag is more than just what tech you've got in it um, and you are much more than what's in your kit bag true enough so there we are yeah. what a Nice point to finish on. <laughs> there we are. Um, thank you again for watching, guys. We hope you've enjoyed this little deep dive into Nick's camera bag. Um, we've got lots more coming up on the channel soon, and I hope you've enjoyed everything we've talked about. Um, other than that, I think we'll just catch you in the next one. Thanks. <laughs>